Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple just released the second major update to macOS Monterey 12.2. In this video, I'm going to go over everything that you need to know about this update, including bug fixes, new features, security fixes, enterprise changes, and unsupported Mac open core legacy patcher news. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Right off the bat, the update was delayed two days. It was expected to release on Monday, which it usually is on the 24th, but it was actually released today on Wednesday, the 26th. The 12.2 RC was 21 D48 and the public release of 12.2 was changed to 21D49. So there must have been a last minute change that Apple had to add in there or a security change that they had to put in there before the public release. Now, if you updated to the RC thinking that you are on the last version, you are going to have to check self for update again and you will see the update in there, but it'll be the full 11 gigabyte download for the update, but it will still get you to 21D49. Along with macOS Monterey, Apple did a full drop of all the OSs, including iOS, iPad OS, TV OS, HomePod OS, Watch OS, Big Sur, and Catalina security update. They all got a version bump, so it wasn't just Mac OS Monterey. So if you did update to the RC with those, make sure you check your software update again to get to the latest build version. The 12.2 update was released as a Delta update. If you are coming from 12.1, it should be 1.94 gigabytes. If you're coming from 12.0.1, it should be around 2 to 2.5 gigabytes in size. Apple also released a full installer application for upgrades or fresh installs with a USB installer. And I've got a link to that on my Mac OS Monterey full installer page. And they also, if you have an M1 Mac, released an Apple Silicon IPSW install file for 12.2 to be able to restore your M1 Mac with Apple Configurator 2. If you have an Apple Silicon M1 Mac, the firmware was updated to 7429.81.3. If you have an Intel Mac with a T2 security chip from 2018 to 2020, the T2 Bridge OS was updated to 1916.10.744. Safari version now is 15.317612-4915. How long did it take to download and install the 12.2 update? Well, the download part takes however fast your internet connection is, is once it gets the download, it actually has to prepare the update. On this M1 2020, the preparation time for the update took 11 minutes. Once that was finished, it was immediately able to restart and the total install time until a usable desktop was 21 minutes. So a 32 minute total install time for the 12.2 update. Date. With every macOS update, Apple always addresses security vulnerabilities and bugs, and the 12.2 update is no different. They addressed a ton of fixes, and I wanted to go over one that you might have seen in the news lately, and that's called Safari Leaks. If you go to safarileaks.com, you can see this in live demo form, and what it does is the vulnerability leaks your browsing history in Safari 15.2 and lower, and you can check that by basically just going to any of these sites here, and then going back to the window to see if the any of the information was leaked. Now let's try that on Safari 15.2 and lower to see what that looks like. As you can see here, this 12.1 system has Safari 15.2 installed. So let's try that out on here. So let's go to boston.com for example. It'll open up in a new tab, wait for it to load, then go back to the Safari leaks page and you can see your browser currently leaks one database name. So if we go back to our 12.2 system, let's try that again with boston.com, let it load. We'll go back to the Safari leaks and nothing has been leaked because the the vulnerability has been fixed. Now let's take a look at Apple's official patch and fix notes. There is none. And this is not the first time Apple has done this. Once they get out of a first big maintenance fix after the initial release, like 12.0.1, there was a lot of fixes. There was a big list here for 12.1. Then usually the next one, there's not too much. There's only some minor fixes. And then 12.3 is usually what's considered the spring release and has a bunch of fixes and usually you'll have a big patch notes. But after that, they will be back to maintenance and they'll usually go back to just saying, oh, there's only security fixes in here and there's only bug fixes in here. So it's unfortunate that Apple does that when they're doing fixes behind the scenes. It's just, we want to know what is being fixed because it would help us if we're having an issue and we can see our fix on here and have the confirmation. So it's up to us to figure out what the heck was fixed. And all we can do is go by actual changes in what we see or verify fixes and changes. So let's take a look at some of the ones that I've been able to find so far. Let's talk about the memory leaks. There's been a bunch of 
reports of the memory leaks started in 12.0.1 and a lot of those were fixed in the 12.1 update but some were saying that the windows server was not fixed so we'll have to wait for user reports because again apple does not see anything about that in the patch notes we'll have to see we already went over the safari leaks vulnerability fix i also wanted to mention that you might start seeing macOS monterey upgrade notifications are starting to be sent out apple sent that new package out to all machines that was installed on january 14th and it's set to notify you every week that hey mac os monterey is available and you can update to that and then next is the music app redesign from the back end and what this means is that apple music was always running a web type interface in the background and wasn't a full native app so apple redesigned that in 12.2 so there's been a lot of reports that when users tried to load their albums or their list it would take forever to load there's a lot more of a fluid experience now in the brand new from the back and you won't know any notice any visual changes in the music app but it should be a lot quicker for you now the next thing I wanted to go over was enterprise changes in the 12.2 update. If you manage Macs in education, business, or government, these fixes might be important to you. One of the first ones is, and this was a big one that was reported, it resolves an issue searching mail in Microsoft Outlook. It was great that that one was fixed. There was another one that was fixed in Windows Server that was called Print Nightmare. Microsoft fixed that vulnerability, but when they did that, they also broke Windows Smoother Printing from Macs in a business environment. And the good news is that the 12.2 update fixes that so you can print and authenticate from your print server again. The next one is, is resolves an issue connecting to an HTTPS proxy after connecting to a VPN. Also fixes an issue where network extensions may intermittently lose connectivity after long periods of use. Finally, resolves an issue that prevented file vault recovery key from rotating if you needed to change it. So it was great that Apple included those enterprise changes and fixes in 12.2. Next, let's talk about some unsupported Mac news with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. If you haven't watched any of the information or news since the previous 12.1 update, a lot of things have changed. One of the first things was is the big changes in the 0.3.2 and 0.3.3 update, which changed the way the Mac was spoofed. It's now spoofed as a virtual machine. And if you're running 0.3.1 OpenCore Legacy Patcher and below, you'll have to do some additional checks before you update to the latest version before it is totally compatible. And you can watch this video right here that explains the whole situation. After that, the 0.4 major release was just released. Now we have the brand new GUI version of the application that was redesigned from the ground up and is fully supported and feature parity with the TUI app or the Terminal User Interface app. This is absolutely fantastic. And if, if you want to learn more about that, you can check out this 0.4.1 update that goes over all the features and changes and how to update. Now, going back to this machine here, you can see I updated this mid-2014 macbook pro to 12.2 with this version of the patcher and then i had to install the post volume patches after and i get so many questions do i have to still install the post volume patches after with the new gui app all you need to do is click on post volume patch and you'll see right here whether your mac requires it or not and remember with mac os monterey this changed there's so many additional things that need to be installed that are not just graphics acceleration for example wi-fi and a couple other things that are really important so if you see something in here you will definitely need to do the root patching or the patch after installing the Mac OS 12.2 update. And that's an easy way to check if you have to install the post volume patches. And that's it for the Mac OS Monterey 12.2 update. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.